Hey everyone, it's 8.34 Eastern, so let's get started. Welcome to the Back to School webinar. I'm Trustee Jessica Bay. And I'm Trustee Shinbi Park. We're super excited to be your presenters tonight. Thank you all for tuning in. Please stay until the end of the webinar. Not only is this is an opportunity to strengthen your club, but you also get to ask us questions directly. And you may even be one of the five lucky winners to win a Key Club backpack. Over the course of this webinar, we will discuss a new update to the guidebook, the Key Club magazine, membership recruitment and retention, dues, YOF, Kwani's One Day, and Kwani's Family Month. The first topic tonight will be an update. Integrated into our guidebooks and bylaws, it states that all pronouns throughout the Key Club International Bylaws that refer to genders, such as he, she, him, her, be changed to eliminate gender reference, such as changing to they or their or other rephrasing as appropriate. This change was implemented by the Immediate Past International Board to reinforce one of our most important core values, inclusiveness. Next, for the updates on the KCI Magazine. The Kiko Magazine has now become a blog that is updated with new content every week. Now, instead of waiting for the fall issue, you can go on kikomagazine.org anytime to read new stories and share your own. Here, you'll find just about everything, from pictures from key clubs who are serving food in Ohio to inspirational articles on former key clubbers who are now making a big difference around the world. Feel free to submit your articles or pictures about your key club story or service project, and be sure to check the blog often. On to our next topic, membership recruitment and retention. Members are the most important part of our organization, and without our members, we would not be the largest student-led organization in the world. Now, Shimbi will talk about the tips on recruiting. So we have five tips on ways to grow and improve your club membership. First tip is to promote. I can't stress enough when I talk about promotion. Without promotion, your club and any information you want people to hear won't be heard. It's a good idea to pass out brochures or other promotional materials and to ask your school to announce your meeting date and time. Relating to the first tip is tip number two. To make promotional materials such as newsletters, flyers, emails, social media posts that stands out. Use pleasing colors, aka all the colors from the Key Club brand guide and Key Club brand graphics which can be found on the website in the resource tab. I know especially for me when I see official promotion materials that catch my eyes and stick in my mind. Tip number three, set goals and have each officer responsible for certain tasks. When you divide your work between the officers, you can proficiently and quickly get the job done. You should also have a set list of your goals and a general timeline to when you want to start and finish them. Tip number four, Hold your first meeting as an information session that speaks about what Key Club is, serving leadership, annual projects, how to get involved, expectations, and dues. The first meeting is always important because it gives your members their first impression of the club. Make sure to be informative but engaging towards the members. And finally, tip five. Invite your underclassmen to make them feel welcome. These underclassmen are completely fresh into the school. Remember to grab them before they go off to join other clubs. If you personally reach out to them, they will feel welcome and special. But even though you have recruited a lot of new members, it won't help you unless you, unless you can keep them. And now, Jessica will speak about tips on retention. So tip number one, hold at least one fun meeting a month. Whether that be a social, contest, games, guest speaker, or all of them, it's important to introduce your members to the social aspect of Key Club and food. I cannot tell you how many people will come to their first Key Club meeting because of the food and become drawn to the organization. I was one of them. Tip number two, names are important. Really take the time to get to know others. Not only will it help people feel welcome, it will also create a close-knit community where people feel like they belong. All the more reasons to keep coming to the meetings and the service projects. Tip number three, recognition. It could be monthly awards for the people who volunteered the most, or you can develop a point system according to meeting or event attendance, where people can receive prizes or participate in a raffle. Recognizing members' hard work and awarding them for it gives them a reason to stay in the club. And last, but definitely not least, tip number four, encourage underclassmen to run for office. 
It's important that when the older officers graduate, there's a handful of qualified leaders with experience that can continue to lead the club to grow and maintain their strength. As a freshman, the upperclassmen who genuinely cared and were passionate for service inspired me to run for office. It's really important to keep that spark of inspiration going. And as you get more members, you need to help them pay dues, which Shimbi will talk more about. Submitting dues is easy. Make sure to round up information, including email address and year of graduation from your members. Next, log in and update the member records on the Membership Update Center. When you are finished, remember to select Roster Complete. Finally, submit your payment with a credit or debit card, or the traditional way, print out an invoice and pay by check under the Finance tab. The check should be paid to Key Club International. Speaking of international, international dues are $7 and district dues are dependent on each district. To view your respected district due amount, visit the Key Club website. Also, your club may add on to these dues. The amount added is dependent on your club's financial standards. These dues go towards many purposes, and some big ones include the Key Club magazine, charter kit materials, officer trading materials, and our annual international convention. So, when are dues due? On the PowerPoint are some important dates. Remember these. September 6th. Oh wait, we already passed that. Today is September 19th, which means Membership Update Center is open. You're allowed to update your membership roster and submit your dues now. November 1st is the early bird deadline, which in fact, if you turn in your dues by then, you will receive a patch. This is considered a Key Club International Award. Additionally, there's a new contest this year. If your club updates their entire list of officers with names and emails by November 1st, your club will be entered into a drawing for one of 10 $250 prizes. To update your list of officers' name and email addresses, visit the Membership Update Center. Any club secretary or faculty advisor can update the list of officers for your club. And last, December 1st is the regular deadline. After this date, your club may be considered delinquent, so please remember to write down all these dates. Now, for our next topic, YOF. Wait, YOF? What does that stand for? Easy question, Jessica. The YOF is the Youth Opportunities Fund, a grant program created by the Key Club International that is open to any active Key Club or member. Each year, key clubs and individuals are allowed to submit an application for a chance to request a grant from $100 to $2,000. Wow, that sounds great. I just looked up more information from the Key Club website, and the deadline is October 15th. Feel free to visit keyclub.org slash YOF for more information. Now, for our upcoming Qantas family events. But wait, it's time for Key Club Trivia. Oh, trivia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You will be given 50 seconds to answer this question. 15 seconds. The first person to answer correctly will be given a shout out and a prize. Please submit your answer to the question box. The question is, name all six branches of the Kiwanis family. Four, three, two, one, zero. The winner will be contacted by us later uh, during the day um, through email or phone, so please wait for that information. The Qantas family consists of these six branches. K Kids, Builders Club, Key Club, Circle K, Action Club, and Kiwanis International. Nice job, everyone. So on Kiwanis One Day, which will be held on October 22nd, Key Clubbers and Key Club family members all over the world celebrate the strong relationship that we have. It's an example of our belief that kids need Kiwanis as mentors, as friends. And how should we celebrate Kiwanis One Day? First, you can attend the Kiwanis or any other k from branches meetings and invite them to yours as guests or speakers. Or plan a community service project or a fundraiser together. 
where you can get to know your fellow Kiwanis family members through service. Make sure you post on social media with the hashtag Kiwanis One Day. The International Board will be looking through these tweets and we would love to retweet some of your posts. Finally, for our last topic for tonight, Kwani's Family Month, which is during November. As Jessica said before, the Kwani's Family is comprised of a group of organizations overseas by Kwani's International, KI. Essentially, KI is our parent organization. During this November, let us all remember the benefits you have as being a part of the K family, such as having support for your key club, gaining insight on different service projects, and serving as an inspiration. During the month, get involved to foster a good relationship with your K family members. Some ways are to get in contact with nearby Kwani's club. Kwanians love hearing from you, so get out your pens and paper to write notes of encouragement or thank you cards for their support and guidance. And for our next upcoming webinar. This year, the college financial aid process is starting early. The free application for federal student aid, also known as FAFSA, can now be submitted as early as October 1st. This free 60-minute webinar, held on October 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern, will help you make sense of the new changes to the FAFSA and the financial aid process. Thank you, everyone, for listening so far. Now we will answer any questions that you may have. Please type your questions into the question box, and we'll try our very best to answer them. So I have a question. Um, the question is, how can we get members to volunteer more? So I guess I can touch on this briefly, um, and Shinbi can add to it as well. So some ways that I found was useful when helping members volunteer more is to really have them make friends um, through that aspect of volunteering. And um, having it, you know, going to a volunteer meeting or a volunteer event with your friends, I think is a lot more fun. Um, to have that social aspect of it as well, or you know, having a certain um, hour requirement that is not like really required or really forceful, but rather kind of like suggestive, is very useful. Um, another thing is to have like a point system where the members who had the most volunteer hours per month would get a certain prize or win, win uh, to be win to be like raffled into a drawing or anything like that. Um, Shinbi, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, I know a lot of clubs has been very successful using a point system. It really motivates the members to like gain as much points as they can to earn hours, and it really like pushes them to keep volunteering. And it's like a really good way to just stay constant throughout the club. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the next question we have is, what are some ideas for Kiwanis One Day? Um, I know something that my club always does is to have an inner club uh, project with my own Kiwanis. And we go to this um, community garden and we help them uh, kind of clean out, clean out the area or um, plant new things. It could be anything from, you know, like the street cleanup or um, like a fundraiser or like a bake sale. So anything that you can kind of engage your Kiwanis clubs in and really get to know them, I think is really special. Okay, so I have a question. What are some effective ways to promote Key Club at school? 
So I touched upon this a little bit during the webinar, and I think one of the most important ways to promote Key Club is announcements. Um, definitely, if you have morning announcements, this is when all the school can hear about what's happening in the school, and it really catches your attention um, during the morning. And especially when you announce your meeting date and time, um, that's also very informative to all the members. Another way is to, um, if you have like a bulletin board, to have flyers. Um, definitely, uh, the flyers will definitely catch on to people's eyes. I know maybe not a lot of people do look at them, but it's definitely a way for members and other people who aren't members yet to get involved with Key Club. And I said, and I said before, um, promotional materials, especially if you make them with detail and really use like the Key Club brand guidebook, um, it would also make the display more pleasing and more attractive to look at. Yeah, and uh, just to add on to that, I think in this is the in this day and age, um, you know, really using social media, taking advantage of that, you know, having a promotional video or anything that's like shouldn't be said appealing to the eye, or um, having people that you know that the members might know on those videos is really useful um, in like catching their attention. Um, I think yeah, and I have another question. This one is, what are some ways we can increase K family relations. Um, so if you have a K Kids or a Builders Club in your area, I think it'd be really cool to build a relationship with them that's almost like a mentor, like a big brother, big sister kind of stuff. Um, I know that when you're in elementary school or when you're in middle school, um, you really like look up to the high school kids and you think they're really, really cool. Um, so to kind of see them and to be their role model and to show what you like like why you like doing service and why you why you're so passionate about service and kind of engaging in those activities like with them and having inner club um, opportunities with them I think really inspires them to join Key Club later on and keep volunteering and keep serving and uh, same thing with Kiwanis except the roles are kind of switched so I think that you know I think we can really learn a lot from the adults that are in Kiwanis clubs and. Um, having those inner club really activities or um, those events and going to their meetings and kind of listening in really helps that K family relations. So I also have a question from Madison. She said, how to balance all APs and be on a district board? So I was on the district board last year on Capitol and balancing APs um, definitely was a challenge on um, having schoolwork and K club. Um, one way that was very helpful for me was that I set a time for Key Club. Like I, I would always come home, finish all my homework, do what I had to do, and then after I would set a time, a time limit to when I could start my Key Club um, objectives. And it really helped me to just separate the time and not just go for it. Like it would, it's very efficient when I had like a list and I knew what I had to do, and I organized myself and timed myself patiently. Jessica, do you have any other tips? Yeah, so um, I, I agree with everything that Shinbi said. It's definitely a challenge to have this, uh, have a big responsibility, a leadership responsibility, and still balance all the academics um, going on at school. Um, I think something that might sound really obvious, but I think really helps me a lot is putting my phone downstairs <laughs> and yeah I, I think sometimes you know I kind of get caught up like I try to look at my phone and I'm just like oh I'm gonna text my friend about this assignment because I have a question and then I somehow end up on Instagram so like those kind of times that you waste on social media that you lose um, actually amounts to quite a bit so really staying out of those kind of distractions and having you know 30 or 45 minutes of straight studying or straight key club um, to kind of get those out of the way, I think would be really helpful. Um, and I have another question. It says, as a president, how do I create better communication among myself and the rest of my officers? So communication with um, the other officers as a president or in whatever position I feel is really important. Um, I think it could clear up a lot of miscommunication that could be happening at that point of time. Uh, something that I found really, really useful um, was 
when my club president had like weekly meetings or you know just kept checking in with us through Facebook Messenger or like a group chat so that we could like really connect with each other and get to know each other on a personal level or even just kind of you know maybe going out to Froyo one night and just kind of talking about each other and like getting to know each other I think really helps clear up um, any misunderstanding that might be going on so yeah having that personal connection I feel is really important I have another question. Uh, Mario said, can I apply these these to new builders club that I'm helping start at my school? Of course you can. Like all the stuff that we said to the back to school webinar will be recorded and posted on our YouTube page. So you could go back and listen to the webinar again. Um, anything that was mentioned here to promotion, recruitment, um, dues, and YOF. Uh, actually, YOF wouldn't go for the Builders Club, but definitely things about membership recruitment and retention can um, apply to the Builders Club. And another question, um, hi, in your opinion, would a Snapchat filter help on a club rush day? In my opinion, I definitely think it would, because Snapchat is a huge thing and everybody loves it, and they're, if, like during the club rush day, you're like, oh, we have a Snapchat filter. And, and they'll be like, oh, gee, that's so cool. So like, I think that's a very good way to promote Key Club, especially because Snapchat is so popular with everybody these days. So I say go for that. So I have another question. Um, it is, what should I do if my fellow district officers are not pulling their weight? So, being in a, I, th I feel like being in a um, district position, but also having that responsibility to, you know, like talk to them face to face is really, really hard sometimes when, you know, you have kind of like a personal relationship with them or kind of like a friendship with them. And I, I know that sometimes it's really hard to have those conversations especially when they're a close friend of yours. But I feel that it's really important to, you know, let them know and just say, hey, I, I don't want to be mean or I don't want to be rude, but I might be, I feel that I am frustrated or I feel that I'm disappointed because of this, that, and that. And I feel that really having that mature conversation is really important. Um, and if it ends up being that maybe, maybe like the conversation doesn't end well or maybe if you feel that, you need someone, you need like an adult or your district administrator there to kind of kind of delegate that conversation. Um, it, might, it is a conversation that needs to happen. Another question, if administration is against and charter in a club, what do you think is the best or most accessible way to persuade them otherwise? Um, that's very unfortunate if an administrator is against it, but I the you know, Key Club is such an influential club that if you do display the amount of people we have in this club to our website, to um, members' testimonies, and if you definitely get an advisor to support you and to grow and to convince the administrator that you're willing to take on this club to to grow this club, I think it's a great way um, to use Keep Up International as a whole and speak about how many people are in this club and how many people have been influenced by all the things that Keep Up has done. There's a lot of videos on Keep um, about Keep Up too, which you could also present to the administrator, and it's just I think the most successful way and the most realistic way is just to we ensure them that Key Club is the largest and the largest and the oldest um, student-led organization, and it's there's nothing, and it's just a successful club, and they could take on it. Jessica, do you have any? Do you have any? Do you have any other? Any other way? Them? Um, I think you covered it all, Shambi. I think that was really really well explained. Um, yeah. I have uh, a question. 
It says, you mentioned we should inspire young key clubbers to run for positions. What if they are stuck about being shy and afraid of giving a speech? What should I tell them? So this is a question that I actually get pretty often. And I know plenty of people um, that come into key club uh, kind of being shy and like not really being OK with public speaking. Um, I actually think a lot of us you know, come into this organization not having the public speaking be our favorite things. But I think what's really special about Key Club, and I think what you should tell these people is that, you know, Key Club elections are a safe community. Like, people won't, people aren't there to judge you. People aren't there to, you know, like, see, like, try to bring you down. They're always there listening to your ideas, and they're always there um, trying to get to know you better and to really to give you a chance at running. So, you know, I'd say, I'd say that, just kind of go for it. And um, I know sometimes it can be kind of hard to really take that step. But I know from personal experience, so this is something that um, actually my Qantas president told me when I was considering whether or not to run for international. Um, so he said, he asked me, hey, five years ago, do you like remember any problems that you were having? Do you remember um, any like big things that were happening in your life? And I, I answered honestly. I was like, honestly, I don't, I, I probably was having like boy problems, but like of course I don't remember that now. And uh, he said, so five years from, from this point on, do you, what do you think you're gonna remember about you know being scared to run for this position? And um, I kind of like thought about that and I kind of realized that honestly, like five years from now, if I didn't make this choice to run, I would have felt a lot of regret and a lot of regret and not taking that opportunity. And you know, that question, what it? So, I think I think that kind of really um, shaped my philosophy in like on you know elections and just kind of going for things even though uh, it may be out of the comfort zone. So I really think that you know you should keep encouraging them to run, um, let them know that you can help them through it, and that everyone has those fears of public speaking. So yeah, anything to add on to that, Shinbi? Uh, you covered most of it. Yeah, definitely just be confident and. Um, yeah, just go for it. It's, it's worth doing. Mm -hmm, for sure. I have another question. Uh, I understand that the early bird deadline is November 1st. Let's say our club sends in fees on time for this. Will members wanting to join our club after this deadline affect the eligibility? Um, so by November 1st, if you, spend, if you send more than 15, if you log in 15 members into the um, membership update center, you're eligible for the early bird deadline. And then after, you could add on more members until the December 1st deadline. Yeah, so I just got a question here. Um, how do I increase motivation and knowledge of a new key club that I'm reactivating? I think one thing is to really invite them to your division CCMs or invite them to um, whatever event, whatever key club event that you may be having um, from your own home club. Because you know, having a new club is really challenging, or even having a club that is kind of not very strong, it's really challenging to see. Uh, the benefits of being in Key Club or the excitement or the energy of being in Key Club and kind of bringing them to the DCMs or um, kind of bringing them to your volunteer event or even having an inter-club event with your club and the new Key Club um, where they can kind of meet new people and um, to see what Key Club has potential of doing and see what they're, see what potential that they have. Um, so I think that's a really good, really good question. Um, definitely something that is important. Uh, I have one question. My club's editor has been doubting herself lately, but we really need her to be confident in her position. How can, then, how can I help her realize how fun and creative her position can be? So there's a lot of club editors out there posting newsletters and social media promotion. And a good way is to just research about other districts and other clubs who's doing um, a fantastic job of being an editor. Um, I think, especially with my club editor, we also she also had a problem with this a couple of years ago, where the editor wasn't doing as much as she can. But when I once I showed her 
how much um, fun it can be. Um, definitely, like designing and creating newsletters can be challenging at first, but it's really the most important thing about newsletters is really the context, and it's really the content that you're showing to the club. So I think it's a good idea to make her realize that first, it's not about all the graphics and all about the fonts and all about the colors. It's really about the context that goes out to the clubs first. And, um, to, and it's a good idea to just show her any other um, any other um, publications that Key Club has done because Key Club does provide a lot of graphics, a lot of fonts and um, colors that they can use. So introducing her to the brand guide, that would be awesome because um, the brand guide is very friendly because you're allowed to use certain things and, limit, and limiting yourself to that much. It's very fun to just investigate and just to experiment with um, what, the grand, what the brand guide offers to you. Yeah, I have a question here. Um, it says, any suggestions slash advice on getting officers to fulfill their responsibilities without being pushy slash hurting feelings? Um, yeah, I mean, my experience uh, as being lieutenant governor, there's there was always, you know, the people that uh, maybe didn't meet up to my expectations and I think sometimes um, that's something that you can't avoid. Like you will always try and you will try to get them to meet your expectations and to fulfill the responsibilities. But um, not everyone is involved in Key Club as other people are. And I think it really took me a while to kind of understand that and to kind of almost, almost like reaching a common ground with them. So, you know, like letting them know, hey, I understand that maybe this and that might be going on, but I still expect or I still feel that these responsibilities need to be made or need to be met because, you know, coming into this office or coming into this position, that's what you agree to do so. So if you have any service agreements um, that they signed in the beginning of their term, I think that's really helpful in keeping them accountable um, without maybe being pushy or uh, being, you know, having them hurt, having, leaving with hurt feelings. And um, sometimes, you know, it may be something that, just like a personal issue that's going on. So I think asking them, hey, I noticed that, you know, you haven't been attending a lot of meetings, or I noticed that uh, you haven't been turning a lot, turning in a lot of reports in, are you okay? Like, is everything, is, are you, is everything okay? So just checking in, letting them know that no matter what you care, um, I think that's really important. So I have another question. That was a great response, Jessica. <laughs> um, what are some ideas on how to make key club meetings fun? For me, I think one of the most fun part about key club meetings is getting to know people. And getting to know people, there's icebreakers. And fun icebreakers break, the, like it just makes the meeting so much more engaging and entertaining. And uh, it really, makes you go out of your comfort zone to meet people too, so um, definitely try to look up icebreakers. There's tons online and um, a lot of resources on the Key Club website about that. Another idea to make Key Club meetings fun is to put a service project in your Key Club meeting, uh, either making cards for soldiers, which I know my club has done many times, um, making bookmarks, making bracelets for um, fundraisers, um, definitely in incorporating different service projects and doing hands-on activity really engages the members and makes it more fun. Yeah, and to add on to kind of like that service project aspect of it, um, I remember one time during my divisional council meeting, we were making blankets, um, and they're just you know making blankets or any like Shinbu said, any hand, hands on activity. Um, it's always kind of funny to see it because not everyone is like really crafty or really good with hands, but there's always people out there you know helping out. So I think it's a great bonding experience. Um, and I have a question here. Um, I am a secretary. I am a club secretary, and sometimes I feel like I'm doing everything for this club that my fellow board is not contributing enough. What do I do? Sec life is hard. Yeah, secretary life is hard. <laughs> I was a secretary. I was a club secretary once, and I totally understand that. Um, 
because you're the ones, you know, out there taking all the notes, and sometimes people forget about what they're supposed to do, but since you're the secretary, like, you keep track of all of it, you know, you know all of it. So I understand that point of view. Um, yeah, and I, I guess, I guess I'm, I might sound like I'm repeating myself, but, uh, you know, having those hard conversations and um, having those, that kind of conversation, and maybe, like, s saying, hey, can we, you know, can we get the board together, or, like, when you have a meeting where all the board members are there and you feel comfortable, just kind of letting them know, hey, um, you know, I just feel like maybe, I feel like maybe I'm, like, kind of dragging the weight or, like, just being honest and, um, you know, being open with how you feel but not not attacking them I think is really important. And, again, if this is an issue that maybe you can't really deal with um, other District, other members or other officers face to face, then maybe it's something that you can talk to your advisor about and ask her um, how how it can be best approached. Another question: In terms of brand guide, can you give any tips on how to find the fonts without paying for them? I complete my newsletter using Google Slides. So, um, as a lieutenant governor, I did most of my stuff on Microsoft Word. On Microsoft Word, the Centric Gothic and a couple other fonts that I found in the Grand Guidebook. Um, I know on Google Slides, there's not a lot of fonts you can use except for, for not the one that starts with a V. But um, definitely, if you can afford um, using Microsoft Word, there is an online version of Microsoft which you can use. Uh, it's just a little hard to save and publish with that um, system, but it's definitely something you can try. Yeah. Um, I have a question here. It says, what should the execs of our school key club do if another exec has other commitments that they hold higher than key club? So. This is actually kind of the situation that I was in earlier in my Key Club experience, except it was flipped. So I held Key Club higher than everything else, even though I was um, an officer in other other organizations. And I started to realize that, you know, having having a lot of these positions um, really didn't mean much if I wasn't putting my 100% in it. So I think kind of helping them realize that, hey, you know, if you're not willing to fulfill your commitments and if you're not willing to be responsible for your position, then maybe it's something that you need to consider letting go or, because um, it really doesn't help both sides, you know, what, whatever organization that they're involved in and uh, they may not be happy with the decision that the person is making. So I think, I think just being open and just letting them know that, you know, since you since you dedicated yourself to doing this, uh, maybe it's something that you might want to start committing more committing more to. And that doesn't mean that you know just because you're in Key Club, like your life should be Key Club. Like I think a lot of us here uh, are involved in other things too. But it's just making sure that you're balanced, um, that you're not having too much on your plate. Another question. What would you recommend as food to engage members during meeting? Um, I think using food during icebreakers is a really great idea. Definitely like candy or maybe Starburst, something colorful to like maybe play a game where you have to match the colors to a question or match the color to find another person with the same color. Um, that's something that's very engaging to members and especially for like large clubs, um, food can get messy, so I recommend getting food that's in small portions, but uh, you could distribute it easily, or if you do like chips or cookies, it's, I recommend getting plates and bowls, definitely, for um, to prevent any messy, and yeah, do you have any recommendation what kind of food to engage members during meeting? Jessica? Um, I think you touched on basically everything. Um, I guess, yeah, just make sure that whatever food you decide to get, um, the members know what's in them. So in case of any allergies, you know, there's always that health concern going on. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, I think any, honest, any kind of food is okay as long as 
as long as it's not like a full meal. <laughs> so, but food is good. It's very good. Um, I have a question. <laughs> I have a question. It says, how to deal with post key club event depression? Um, so in my district, actually, it's called uh, post decon syndrome. <laughs> we have a nickname for it. I think it's P. What is it? P D S or something? Yeah, P D S. Yeah, it's actually it's like an actual thing. Um, yeah, but I I understand. I think a lot of key clubs understand. You know, after decon or after board meeting, how hard it is to kind of go back and. Um, to feel like you're not with all your friends anymore or like feel that you don't have that kind of hype anymore. Um, but really know that, you know, like whatever connections that you make through Key Club events, it's always there even though it may not be like physical face to face. You know, with, with the technology that we have nowadays, um, I think it really helps to be in a group chat with them or to, you know, talk to them, ask them how they're doing and just checking in and letting them know that you're here and that, you know, you miss them and that you appreciate the connections that you've made. Uh, but know that, you know, even though even though key club events may have ended like two years ago, you know, the connections that you made there there will really continue on uh, throughout your life. So if you choose to do so. <laughs> Yeah, that's so cute. <laughs> okay, so another question. How do we fix the transportation problem many members have when it comes to volunteering for events? So my, when I was a lieutenant governor, my division definitely had this problem because we were very spread out from North Maryland to like North Delaware. Um, but I think one way that we kind of fixed it is carpooling with our advisor. If your advisor is like willing to go with you, I think um, grouping different schools in one area to transport to the service project is a really great idea, especially if you have an adult who's willing to support that. Um, if not, there's also upperclassmen, I hope, whoever is dedicated to driving and carpooling with them, that would be great. It's always, it's always hard to um, get to service projects, especially if you are a big division or a big club, but um, carpooling and asking for rides or asking for just like a mass transportation to that service project is probably one efficient way to do. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, carpooling with other people, carpooling with a lot other key clubbers is, you know, definitely fun. Like, I, I think, you know, driving long distances with my key club friends has to be one of the best memories that I made um, through my key club career, so, yeah, and I have a question here, um, it says, everyone thinks icebreakers are boring and awkward, what do you think is a good way to get people to mingle or some not awkward icebreakers? Yeah, so I think going out of someone's comfort zone is really, really challenging at times. Um, the tip is to start start small and go big. So, you know, maybe day one, your first first key club meeting, you decide to do some decide to do an icebreaker that's just a little bit out of their comfort zone. And the next week you kinda just make that that leap and um, the next week. So as I think once you gradually start like making people less comfortable, I think that's a lot better than, you know, coming having like a big awkward icebreaker on the first day. And I think an icebreaker that um, is really like low risk but still pretty effective is something called soulmate. So uh, a lot of you guys may have heard of it. You guys can totally look it up. But it's basically when uh, a person comes out, you know, in on the front in the front of the room or whatever, and then um, they just kind of say like what their preferences are, and whoever sits down or whoever stands up um, according to their preferences is quote unquote their soulmate and you know they may get pri like prizes or food um, but really starting with that low risk uh, icebreakers and moving to moving towards like a higher risk icebreakers um, is really helpful and I think having having people that you know people might think that someone's like too cool to do something like make sure that those people are participating because once people once people start seeing that the cool people start doing it then they're like okay well I have to do it now so really having the leaders and you know like be part of that too like even though you may be leading the icebreakers as an officer or maybe have the other officers like join in with them so that they feel that they don't feel like they're the only ones doing it so really kind of going by example too 
So another question, if I'm a little scared, what are some ways I can get involved with my local Kwanis family? Um, first thing, do not be hesitant to reach out to your Kwanis family. They are the most friendly people. Do not be scared. Give them a call or email them at first then. Email them at first if you're a little scared or intimidated to talk to adults, but they're, they're the clubs who are supporting you. They're the clubs that chartered your clubs, and they're, they're the leading factors, they're leading people who made Keiko possible, and they're here to support you. And some ways you can get involved is actually just like um, Kwanis One Day. Um, we chat to them, ask them if they wanted to do a service project together, and Kwanis Family Month, which is also in November. Um, definitely do something then. They'll definitely be willing to engage with you. Um, I just think of an easy way to start off is by emailing your um, Kwanis advisor. Yeah, and really I think remembering that um, Kwanis members are there to help us and a lot of them volunteer um, their time to make sure that key clubs are doing okay. Uh, so really like appreciating that I think is really important. Um, I have a question here that says, what are good ways to keep members involved in Key Club and keep them active throughout the service year? Uh, so if you actually attended ICON uh, this summer, um, John Scherzer um, did a presentation um, on effective board of Key Club, or th effective ideas, or like the way that Key Club works. Um, and so there are some it's actually a research that he did, and uh, this is based on the question of why do people stay in Key Club? And 29% of that is due to service opportunities, 23% of that is um, due to connected values. So having the same uh, passion for service, you know, connecting on a one-to-one -one basis on whatever you believe in, uh, whatever you feel that is important um, going on around the world. And 16% in strong relationship with others, so having that personal connection. And 16% uh, is to improve the resume. <laughs> so, you know, I think having having those service projects always available throughout the year and um, but also having the community that you know is is there for them and is um, there to support them, and I think just the idea of being in a service service organization is something uh, that is really important and really great. I have another question: When should you worry about running for a higher office, such as LTG district or international? So, coming from my perspective, I definitely think. Whatever position you're in right now, member, representative, anything, just really focus on what you're doing. The positions that you want to run in the future will come to you naturally, and if you have the passion to run for that, um, definitely it'll come. In, it'll just come to you. And um, coming from, I was a club president, and when I thought about running for LTG was about during late winter when. I mean, sorry, early winter, because LTG's elections are run around February to March. So I think definitely if you're thinking about higher office, you should know when the deadline is to, um, uh, um, to apply. But regarding just thinking about the position just to run for it, definitely remember you need to develop a passion and know that you're serving that you want to serve this for a purpose, not to just serve. Um, Jessica, do you have anything? To um, add? Yeah. yeah, I think I think what you said is really important about running to serve, not just for the position. So I think I think what should be said is one hundred percent right. So whatever position that I, I don't think it's a bad thing to start considering. You know, hey, maybe. Uh, what what roles may I be good in, or what positions do I want to go for? But sometimes, if that um, if that thought becomes too strong, then you kind of forget about the real reason why you're there, and the real reason yeah. is to serve. And I think that's really important. Um, in whatever in all the elections that I've been to, the people that were running because of the position, and the people that were running because they actually wanted to contribute to the organization. You can tell, and it's a huge difference. And members realize that, and they notice that. And when you start putting in more work towards your own position or your own, your own 
responsibilities as a member or an officer or whatever, um, you're going to gain a lot more from that experience and you're going to realize a lot more about yourself as a leader than you know, maybe going to a certain meetings because of political reasons or trying to make friends with certain people because of the votes. Those two things are very different. And once you start putting yourself into the organization because of the work that you do, you'll, you'll realize that whatever path you end up in, uh, things will work out the way that it was supposed to. So, I mean, it's not bad to start thinking about it, but definitely start focusing on kind of your own role and your own responsibilities. Yeah, definitely. So I have another question. Um, how do you make meetings interesting enough for people to stay? Um, so one one good way is to, at the end of the meeting, well, at the beginning of the me meeting, mention that there's something going to be at the end of the meeting. So they're looking forward to something at the end of the meeting. Either Either there's a member of the club, monthly member of the club award, or some reward that you have for your members. And especially having rewards for your members definitely makes your members engaging towards club activities and fundraisers and service projects. And if you have that kind of like, oh, we're going to announce something at the end of the meeting, um, they're definitely going to stay. And it's going to be more interesting for them. Another way to make the interesting enough is to provide visuals. I know during meetings if people are just standing up there and just talking, it could get a little boring. So providing visuals, doing some hands-on projects and activities as we said before, really makes the in meetings interesting and lets the members stay. Yeah, I think that's a really good answer, Shinbi. Um, I have a question here. It says, for Kwanians one day, do you recommend for us to reach out to Kwanians and plan the project or wait for Kwanians to come to us? So um, I really think that it's okay, and I recommend that you go out there and contact the Kwanians and say, hey, you know, Kwanis one day is this day, and we really, really appreciate us, and we really want to maybe come to a meeting or, you know, or do a volunteer activity with you or um, to come to one of your projects and to show our appreciation. Uh, so I think that's something that's uh, really important to kind of just reach out to the Kwanians. Uh, one question, what can you say to hype up club members that are new to Kika for DCON? Okay, so DCON is probably the most fun event in Key Club ever. Um, definitely um, tell Key Clubbers that how many people you meet and how many diverse people you meet at DCON. And if, you, if the district has any promotion videos, definitely show that. And um, if you have previous members that have attended DCON, Make sure to ask them for a testimony. Um, ask them how they felt during DCON, what they learned, how many people they met. Um, definitely, in, like DCON attendance is very important for clubs, and um, to hype that up is very important. I think, um, as I said before, promotion videos definitely helps. Testimonies and really just telling them your personal side, like what what DCON is really about and just make it really exciting and and it's like the truth. You're telling them the truth of how engaging and be and fun DCON is to your members. Yeah, um, so I have one last question, and we have to start wrapping it up, but the question is, what small quick fundraiser are effective to fundraise for the club's funds? So um, going around whatever your cause may be, I think number one step is to promote uh, why you're doing this and what the fundraisers are for. Um, and some ideas are, you know, I think my club is doing something where you can go to a football game and you collect money or you kind of do like a miracle minute for whatever cause that it may be. So um, being at a place where uh, I think a lot of students are there and a lot of parents are there is really important. Um, anything with food, you know, bake sale, um, car washes, I think actually it's getting kind of too cold for that, but 
something like that. Um, any anything to add on, Shimbi? Yeah, what you said was really good. Um, so to conclude the webinar, we'll be announcing the trivia winner, which is Audrey Chow. Um, Matthew Nance will be emailing you about sending you your new Key Club socks. Yay! <laughs> okay, so that is the end of the webinar. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Yeah, and if you guys have any further questions, um, please feel free to email us or email Matthew Nance. Uh, we hope that everyone has a wonderful school and Key Club year, and thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.